In this video, we're going to use a jig by BRD Engineering to dimple a barrel to install a uh, low profile gas block on an AR-15 that I've been building. Now it's a long story, I haven't done a video on the gun or anything, but I wanted to get a gun in 6.5 Grendel, try out the cartridge, try out the rifle. And I went online and there was a guy on gun broker selling uppers and he had 6.5 Grendel and he had some other exotic calibers. He had total uppers uh, on there. And I should have been suspicious to begin with. Usually a custom upper all together, you know, from uh, like Rock River or something, they're going to run you 708 or $1,000 just for the upper. So I got this upper without the scope uh, for about 500 bucks. He had to buy it now price 700 And first thing uh, when it showed up, it's not a 6.5 Grendel. It's in a 264 Less Bear Custom, which is a variation. And when I do review this rifle, I'll, I'll explain why and what the difference is. But basically it is a 6.5 Grendel. And it had this key mod free floating handguard on there. Well, to use this, you got to use a low profile gas block like this. And there's two ways of doing this. You could either drill through the side once you have a fixture holding it to the barrel and drive tapered pins, or like most, a lot of these, you just have two set screws. On the bottom, here, let that focus. So, when you put the set screws in, I've, I've mounted some gas blocks in the past um, with the set screws, got them tight, locked tight at them in, and I didn't have any trouble with them. But this gun here, I took it out and shot, and after three rounds, the recoil slid the gas block up to where it wasn't ejecting the case. And then, you know, it got complicated there. I, I kept shooting it single shot just to test it out. And then there was a screw that holds this free floating handguard into this. This is your barrel nut for the free float. There's like little notches in there. Well, when I tightened it down, I'm lining this up because when it showed up, the handguard was loose. I tightened it down, I got the nut stuck in there, or the screw with the little point and I had to drill it out to get it loose to get this all apart so I can get the gas block and everything off. Had to take off the flash suppressor muzzle brake and uh, it was just a nightmare of a deal. I'm glad I didn't pay the full shot for it. Whoever put this upper together just kind of like loosely tightened down everything obviously didn't test fire it. So the whole thing was a mess to begin with, but the only good thing is this barrel does shoot well. So, what we're going to do is, and the simplest thing to do uh, is I got this jig. Now the reason I got it is I just don't have the time to make, you know, it's not that difficult. I could probably make one of these, but what it is, let's focus here. Damn, this camera. Okay. It's got two set screws on the top. It's bored out to 750 thousandths for the gas block. He makes a sleeve that you can go to the 600 and some odd thousandths pencil barrels. And I believe that he has some bored out for the bull barrels, which are about 900 thousandths or a little under an inch. And you have two set screws on the top, two holes there, and that's where you're going to run your drill to put your dimples in. It's flat on the sides, so you can clamp this into a vise. Okay, and basically what we do is one side lines up the gas port and holds the fixture down, and then you rotate it around and with a drill, place it, you know, drill your little uh, dimples, they call them, 
And basically what you want to do is just drill the, uh, take the drill down and put a, the, the tip, the spot face more or less, or like a chamfer in there. We'll take a closer look at this. Okay, now what you get in the package, he sends a little jig, the two uh, screws, an Allen wrench, and a proper size drill. Now how it works is you got one screw, okay you got one screw here, the dark one, and if you see there's a point, very sharp point machine down there. What this does is you'll screw this down in and, and line it up, that point will line it up with the uh, hole your gas hole in your barrel. Now the other set screw, when you tighten it, is like a little Teflon tip or something. And what this does is this is going to lock the jig and everything down on your barrel without marring it, okay, or hurting the finish. Get that back in there. So basically, that's what you do. And once you have it on the barrel, he shows it. That's why he's got flats. You put it in a, a vise on a bridge port. And he sends you the proper size drill. And then you just drill down. You know, it's pretty tight fit. You'll drill down and spot this barrel. Okay. And basically what you want to do is you just want to go to the width of the drill point or the depth of the drill point. You really don't want to drill into the barrel. You just want to put that point, that divot in there, dimple. And then when you lock your screws from your gas block, there's a little chamfer on the end of those set screws that'll go into that dimple and lock in there and then securely hold the gas block, so the recoil. In other words, it, it kind of goes into a depression in the barrel, locks it in place, and you use the other thing to line it up, and then we lock tight it down, and we should be good. No problems, no movement. So let's get started. All right, I got my barrel all set, cleaned. There's the hole. So, like I said, the dark one is the one that's going to line up the, with the hole. So you want that to slide over this way. And I got those backed off. So then you want to kind of come down. You feel a little resistance. You know it's kind of poking out. Oh, all right. Go down, back it off, and then wiggle it. So you know you're in the you're in the hole. Okay. Then go down and just give it a little bit of pressure. Okay. Now it really isn't moving much. So you probably that means the little points lined up in that hole. Now you take this sucker and you turn this other one down. Here, try to hold this. You got that little rubber thing on there. You can tighten down because you got something that isn't going to mar or damage the barrel. Now that's on there tight. It ain't moving. It's lined up with the gas port and we're ready to roll. Now I'm not going to use a drill press. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to mount this in a vise and use a hand drill. So I'll get that set up now. All right, I got my barrel all set, cleaned. There's the hole. So, like I said, the dark one is the one that's going to line up the, with the hole. So you want that to slide over this way. And I got those backed off. So then you want to kind of come down You feel a little resistance. 
I know it's kind of poking out. Oh, all right. Go down, back it off, and then wiggle it. So you know you're in the you're in the hole. Okay, then go down and just give it a little bit of pressure. Okay. Now it really isn't moving much. So you probably that means the little points lined up in that hole. Now you take this sucker and you turn this other one down. Here, try to hold this. You got that little rubber thing on there. You can tighten down because you got something that isn't going to mar or damage the barrel. Now that's on there tight. It ain't moving. It's lined up with the gas port and we're ready to roll. Now I'm not going to use a drill press. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to mount this in a vise and use a hand drill. So I'll get that set up now. Alright, I got it mounted with the aluminum uh, barrel vise. I'm securely holding the whole upper and that together. Here we have our uh, jig. Now I went and mounted the drill and just a hand drill. Now the hole's pretty close. I mean a few thousands. And all you want to do is have a divot there. A few thousands one way or the other isn't really going to matter. As long as that hole's lined up fairly well. And all you want to do, like I said, is just drill in until you get the point. Just enough so that set screw will lock in. So you just line it up. You know, that's why we got the jig, so we don't have to use a drill press. can do this on the fly. You know, and just very gently put a dimple in there. Let's go slow. A little bit of pressure, a little at a time. Mm, looks pretty good. Now his instructions basically says to start it, then in the drill press you can enlarge the holes or enlarge the dimples. Basically getting that off, taking a look at it. I'm just kind of guessing from my safe here. When I see that the dimple's almost the same size as the hole, I'm going to say that it's good. Alright. And we'll take it off and take a look. Basically, that's what you end up with. Okay. Dimples. This camera don't want to focus. It might be time for a new camera. Um, just enough to grab the end of the set screw. And you kind of just take your time and go slow. And now you got a little indentation in there. And your set screw's got something to grab onto. Uh, and that's about it. Then you'd, then you'd put the gas block on, tighten it down, and then I Loctite it in with red Loctite. And a lot of people tell you not to use the permanent Loctite. Let me get the thing. Okay, I use the red permanent Loctite. A lot of people tell you not to use it because a lot of the ways they remove this or try to break a screw or bolt loose is by heating it. Well, you don't have to do that. If you use permanent red, which is stronger than the blue, which is service removable, if you want to get the parts or the screw out, all you got to do is put nail polish remover on it. 100% acetone. Acetone is the chemical that will dissolve the Loctite. You put a little of this on a Q-tip or a rag and get it on a screw and let it, you know, dribble it on there. It doesn't harm the finish of your gun or anything, and it'll loosen the Loctite up, and you can get it off. You know, you can then you can pull the screw out. So don't be afraid to use the red Loctite. And that's what I use. I use the permanent red Loctite whenever I tighten down anything because it, it holds better. 
Okay, we got the gas block mounted. Now, if you look at the bottom there, they're kind of in. The, the way those screws were, they were flush. So they're actually set into them little divots in the barrel. And if you also look, you see there's a slight gap here between that shoulder and the gas block. Well, that's there because um, the end caps for the hand guards. So your spacing, you know, that's another thing when you set these, you got to make sure that your spacing's correct because it's that little 20, 30 thousandths for the thickness of that hand guard cap on the end. Uh, that's why the fixture is kind of worth it. Granted, it's kind of expensive, it's like 50 bucks, but I am going to build a few more rifles, so I'll use it three or four times, maybe more. If people bring me guns to have problems with and I can do a repair. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's pricey, but if you're in the building, you're going to build more than one. It's worth it. Now I'm going to try to get this. Now that I fix that problem, i got to try to assemble this thing all back together again. All right, there we go. Rifle's back together again. Hopefully we won't have no problems with it when we take it out to shoot it. We'll see.